welcome to the Festival of Libraries 2022. Over the next five days, across all 10 boroughs of Greater Manchester, there are over 100 events taking place, celebrating the library as a place of extraordinary stories and everyday creativity. I'm Ivan Wadeson from Manchester UNESCO City of Literature. Manchester became the 26th UNESCO City of Literature in 2017 and is part of a glo growing global network of cities all committed to using culture and creativity to deliver sustainable development and benefit to our communities. Libraries are crucial to the story of Manchester's development and in the festival you'll find all kinds of libraries, public, heritage, specialist, medical and academic libraries. Please visit manchestercityofliterature.com to see the full programme for the festival. To launch the Festival of Libraries this year, our second year, we have a very special online event looking at libraries as places of sanctuary both here in Greater Manchester and in Ukraine. Since 24th of February this year, we've been in touch with our colleagues in Lviv and Odessa cities of Lich in Ukraine to hear from them and to support them in time of invasion. Through Lviv City of Literature and Lviv Public Libraries, we were introduced to the teams from Luhansk in eastern Ukraine, who are right on the front line of the invasion. I will now hand over to Nick Poole, who will chair this discussion to share some extraordinary stories about the role of libraries as places of sanctuary and refuge. Good morning and, and welcome to absolutely everybody uh, joining us here today. My name is Nick Poole, I'm Chief Executive at SILIP, we're the UK's Library Association, working closely uh, with our colleagues in uh, the Ukraine Library Association and uh, indeed in associations around the world. Absolute pleasure to invite you to welcome you here for uh, this session on libraries of sanctuary. Uh, in many ways, a, a tale of two cities, uh, the extraordinary work uh, being done by our colleagues uh, in Ukraine uh, and indeed the fantastic work happening here uh, in Manchester. I think we're all aware we, we live in a time of great change, uh, very significant disruption and conflict all over the world. People are being displaced by war, uh, leaving their homes for an uncertain future. Children's lives are being disrupted. Entire families find themselves in strange new surroundings. Uh, and as a librarian, as somebody who's worked uh, with information and library information in my career, uh, I always think that it's in times like these that simple human values really matter so very much. Uh, values like kindness, empathy, being a good and welcoming host, creating spaces of trust uh, and safety. A smile and a cup of tea, as Liz said when we spoke uh, the other day, can make the world of difference to somebody who's arrived uh, on the shores of a strange new land. So whether it's mobile libraries uh, supporting refugee communities on the shores of Cyprus, uh, the library in Ferguson in the US acting as a place of safety and reconciliation during the riots there, or the amazing work being done in libraries here in Manchester and, and all over the UK, libraries are absolutely stepping up uh, to meet the needs of newly arrived and refugee communities. So my job here today is chiefly to introduce your amazing uh, panel and to make sure that we keep uh, to time. Uh, I just wanted to say a few words by way of introduction uh, to each of our speakers and then I'm going to ask each of them uh, to say a little bit about uh, their work. Uh, so we're very fortunate to have today Yulia Lysiuk, uh, editor of the Good Library Education Project in the Ukraine. Uh, she's been curator of the Brain Park Media School for librarians and indeed the network of programming clubs, the code clubs uh, going on uh, around the region. Uh, we've also got here with us today uh, Anastasia Litashova, head of the Department of Information Technologies and Electronic Resources. Uh, shortly after the events on, on the, uh, in, in the early days of February, she left the then occupied town of Starobilsk and together with her colleagues started an extraordinary initiative, the Wandering Library Project. Also with us today, we have Liz Hibbard, uh, Strategic and Partnership Lead of the Manchester City of Sanctuary. Uh, formerly a teacher, Liz's experiences included working as a volunteer in the jungle uh, camp, refugee camp in Calais, and supporting refugees all over the world. 
Uh, and finally, uh, the sublimely and ridiculously talented Lem Sisse. Absolutely delighted to have you with us today. Lem, BAFTA nominated international prize winning, winning writer, poet, performer, recently awarded, I believe, an OBE for your services uh, to literature. So panel, thank you very much for joining us and, and welcome. What I wanted to do then, if I may, is, is come to each of you in, in turn and ask you to speak a little bit about your work uh, supporting refugees uh, through libraries. So uh, I wondered, first of all, if, if perhaps Yulia and Anastasia, could I ask you to speak a little bit about The Wandering Library, where it came from and, and what it's achieving? Oh, of course. Thank you so much. We are so excited to be here with you. Uh, so our uh, Wandering uh, Library project, it's uh, um, our... Um, rescue project, really rescue project uh, during the Russian full-scale uh, invasion. Our library left the uh, uh, Luhansk region and our town Starobilsk in, past, in parts. Only uh, uh, part of our team managed to leave. Now we are all in different regions in, of Ukraine and uh, part of our team is still in, uh, uh, in the temporary uh, occupied Starobilsk. But we all still try to work together and uh, we have created uh, a wandering library project and now provide uh, uh, different online and offline services. Uh, the project mostly um, is for uh, internally displaced people. Uh, we are running um, uh, the Ukrainian language, uh, language courses, Code Club for Children, Media School Brain Park with the lessons of uh, graphic design, SMM management, copywriting, uh, copyrights, and so on. Uh, we also have yoga therapy. Uh, it is conducted by our director uh, in Cherkasy right now. <laughs> Uh, there are mostly IDPs, uh, uh, librarians, and uh, Ukrainians who went abroad. Uh, we also offer our services to other libraries in Ukraine and uh, become part of their library, uh, library life. Uh, we are trying to uh, unite uh, displaced children, other partners, volunteers, uh, users from uh, Starobilsk, to find a new audience uh, that uh, needs help. I think, uh, Nastya, uh, it's your turn. <laughs> yeah, hello. Uh, I uh, thank you uh, for your support, and uh, I'm glad to see you today. And uh, our project, uh, it's uh, our heart because uh, it's to to hard uh, start something because uh, you have skills but uh, we trying and uh, it's our second evacuation uh, and first evacuation we uh, in uh, 2014 uh, we, when uh, russia occupied uh, uh, part of eastern region and crimea and um, uh, this time uh, was hard for us because we make new team uh, uh, and um, Imagine uh, our director, a uh, seventy-year-old woman. Uh, he left. Uh, she left uh, uh, native town uh, because uh, Russian invaders come into uh, office and uh, lay a K on the table and uh, say you must do what uh, what we want, and uh, that's all. She had to leave the library, uh, taking only stamp and uh, statutory documents. And after that, so we start our first project, uh, Good Library, and uh, we finally open uh, in a new space. Uh, our press center, Julia and me, uh, and uh, Ukrainian Library Association uh, made a lot of noise online, and we started to uh, quickly uh, assemble a new um, collection of books uh, sent uh, to us by Ukrainian uh, authors, uh, publishing houses, and just uh, original citizens. And after 21st of February, uh, we wake up uh, on new reality and to start our second project, our uh, new way, maybe a revolution in library uh, in Ukraine. Thank you both so much. I'm just absolutely extraordinary. And I think that idea that when the library is displaced, you don't stop being a library, you go out to where the people are 
um, and you find new ways to be helpful is, is just amazing work. Um, Liz, perhaps could I come to you just to talk to us a little bit about the experience in Manchester and your work? Yes, certainly. Um, thanks, Nick. And thanks, Julia and Anastasia, for sharing. That sounds incredible, the work that you're doing. Um, so I work for Manchester City of Sanctuary and we're quite a small organisation, um, although we do um, amazing work considering our size. Um, we support refugees and asylum seekers across Greater Manchester, primarily around positive mental health and building resilience. We normally do this through um, providing connections and building support networks and um, through activities that we run ourselves like ladies coffee mornings and yoga but we also work um, very closely with partners across the city and this is this leads to amazing work um, in particular we've been working with the libraries and awarding all of Manchester libraries with the libraries of sanctuary award and in these different spaces and different libraries, um, the staff there have been incredible about learning about the needs of refugees and asylum seekers, learning about the challenges and barriers they face, but also looking at how they can make the, the library space more accessible and welcoming. And what has happened is that through these connections, bringing some of the people I work with into these spaces, people have been able to access very, very practical support around using computers and printing documents, but also finding a space where they can volunteer, where they can bring their children and where they can feel safe and welcome and part of a wider community. And that is just incredible for me. I think it's just such extraordinary work. And I think that that point as well, that it's not just a place of refuge and safety, but active engagement and participation. It's belonging to something and being part of something. I, I think it's, it's so important. Thank you so much, Liz. And and Lem, can I possibly uh, come to you, please? I mean, I know you've, you've been a passionate advocate for and champion of libraries, but also as somebody who grew up um, dependent on, on their support. Are you able to talk to us a little bit about what libraries have meant to you? Yeah, I think um, I, I, uh, libraries were a uh, refuge for me in the kind of classic sense, really. I grew up in the villages of Lancashire. I, um, I was, uh, yes, in, uh, in foster care and children's homes, etc. cetera. And um, the library was a place where first and foremost, I was trusted. I think when seeking refuge, trust is very important because uh, it means that you are seen. You, you, are, you are seen and uh, for who you are rather than what you are, which is uh, in, in need. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that was my relationship to libraries. And then I came to Manchester as a young adult at 18. And libraries became the places where I would uh, read my poetry, read other poets' poetry, but read mine as well. And the first five years of my uh, life as a writer, uh, before traveling around the world to, to read on stages and in theaters, the first places I was reading in England were uh, libraries. And to this day, to this day now, and now I return to libraries to read for various uh, communities to give back, um, to give back. So libraries have tracked my life from uh, my childhood. From the first time I was trusted to take a book away and bring it back. <laughs> There's something really magical about that, isn't there? There's something mm -hmm. about contact and about relationships that, that Yulia and Anastasia at this time where people need contact desperately. And contact doesn't just mean giving, it means it's the relationship of learning. And, and that's what happens when, when we read books. Trust, uh, learning, uh, growth, validity, being seen is all of those things are come together in this seemingly simple transaction of one book from one human being to another. Um, so it's, it's a part of me. 
Just wonderful, Lem. Thank you so much. I was in uh, a fairly new library in Hackney recently where a mum was bringing her seven-year-old in for the first time after the pandemic, and the seven-year-old refused to believe that he was allowed to take any of the books away with him. <laughs> Just, this is all it's mine. Beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I think you, Ukraine again is 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 the the, the example what 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 Yulia and Anastasia are doing there uh, on the front line. By the way, I think it was Anastasia said that her the woman had you you said an AK was put on her table. Yeah, so I just want everybody to know what that was because that was an AK forty seven you were talking about. Yeah, and that's a that's a serious moment which has led to you doing what you're doing now. I just wanted any other viewer to understand what that meant, um, Anastasia. Um, just extraordinary. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Anastasia, did you, wanna, did you want to come back on that one? Yeah, uh, I want to tell uh, our director uh, maybe worked in library uh, 50 years. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's uh, library, it's uh, her life. Uh, and um, it's too hard yeah. for her uh, left a uh, uh, big building, uh, which uh, five, maybe uh, six floors, and uh, a big collection of books. And uh, some people uh, come to you and say, uh, you must uh, change, your, change your mind, change country. And... Uh, and it's a terrorist and it's too hard, yeah. But uh, she uh, finds some, some power uh, inside of her and change her life because uh, she uh, change city, change uh, buildings, change uh, colleagues and uh, it's... Uh, it's a very uh, powerful uh, woman. It's yeah. uh, an yeah. energetic PM yeah. and uh, uh, and so kind. Yeah, it's mm, just amazing. Wonderful for me. I, I always think it's fascinating. People think librarians are, you know, diligently doing processes and things, but actually they're they're champions of freedom and liberty and you know, the right to freedom. And I think we've seen that in Ukraine. We, we've seen it in a number of other countries as well, where some of those basic rights are being challenged. I, I think, I, I mean, that brings me on really to, to my first question I wanted to share with the panel, which is what, what is it about the library that means that they play this extraordinary trusted, as, as Lem says, role in, in people's lives? I don't know, Liz, can I perhaps come to you on, on that one? Yeah, I, I think... Um... They're just so equal and democratic, you know, anybody can access the space. I mean, even now being able to get a library card without, you know, like some of some of the people I work with can use our work address if they need to for a, for a library card. So a lot of the barriers that would exist, you know, historically have been removed. So you can go there and... It's something I always tell people when they first move to Manchester. People tend to congregate in Piccadilly Gardens. I don't yeah. know if they're getting the Wi-Fi from Burger King or something. And it's yeah. like, no, let's go to Central Library. It's warm. It's safe. You know, even if it's just the bricks and mortar, you know, you can go to the bathroom, have a drink of water, be safe and warm. And then also, you know, when you're feeling a bit more like yourself, you can access this wealth of knowledge and meet these people and be there. It's just incredible. And I think they are these hubs of communities. Yeah. Um, that, that's for me, the, the power and, and why they're so valuable. Yeah. I completely agree. And Lem, it sounds like you wanted to come in. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, libraries are full of events, uh, workshops, uh, where people are learning and sharing skills. I'm not sure people are as aware of that. Um, you know, we can, the, the, the internet is one giant reference library, okay? So I want you to think about and imagine that the, the, the physical libraries disappear. What we have is lots of people at home in their rooms, not making contact with others. You know, the library is about contact and contact is the central uh, purpose of community. 
So my experience of libraries is, is going to see events, uh, poetry readings, uh, poetry workshops, but there are all kinds of other events. That's just my, uh, you know, my uh, uh, area. Um, sorry, I just wanted to share that. No, it's, it's amazing. I mean, to, to our colleagues in, in Ukraine as, as well, yeah. what is it about the role of libraries? Yulia, I think you wanted to come in. I would like to add, <laughs> thank you. Um, to be honest, now, uh, personally, uh, my library world, uh, world has uh, turned uh, upside down because of the war. And um, this means for me that our strange, uh, first of all, is in the ability uh, to adapt to conditions uh, in which it would seem impossible to preserve the library. And uh, um, uh, in our situation in Ukraine, it so happened that we are defending our right to live in a free Ukraine with free libraries, mm -hmm. with, uh, with the help of weapons. Uh, for our, it's uh, it's terrible. It's terrible situation, but uh, it is uh, the price of freedom uh, mm. right now. Mm. Uh, so yes, I, I really hope that I managed to express myself correctly. <laughs> yes, yes, um, yes. you expressed it absolutely beautifully, Yulia. I really, really do. I mean, there's something so powerful. I remember in Darfur when um, they were looking to rebuild communities after the, the conflict there, they launched places called Libraries of Peace um, because they recognised that it was a, a, the ideal place for the library to bring people back together. But that, that idea that, that the library is an idea and that idea can adapt to the needs of its community even in, in the hardest of times is just so beautiful. That, that's an extraordinary thing. Um, I mean, I, I think one of the things that fascinates me is is how the role of the librarian has changed in all of this. You know, we're, we're becoming something really different. And I just wonder, perhaps, if I, if I can come to Anastasia and, and Yulia, you know, as, as librarians, how have you had to change and adapt to, to address what's going on? Uh, maybe I say. Yeah. Um, um, for me, uh, uh, libraries and librarians, uh, it's the uh, uh, biggest uh, and uh, powerful uh, uh, men and women and uh, librarians are centers of democracy. It's uh, first of all, yes. and uh, freedom and creatively and uh, in big in uh, inventions, idea books and revolution, we are created in library. And um, we are librarians and our mission is to tell, explain and to lobby. Uh, and uh, we uh, librarians are like po politicians now and uh, uh, we have influence on citizens. It's a big part, part of our work now. It's um, it's necessary, and uh, we must uh, say and un, um, understand that people uh, must uh, know more information, more good information, and uh, and uh, thinking about uh, uh, citizens and uh, and to cre create uh, something uh, something good. I completely agree. And, and it's been fascinating how some of your libraries are uh, they're supporting their communities, but they're also helping people access information about what's going on, aren't they? So they're, they're helping people to stay connected, which is, is just extraordinary. I did also hear of one librarian helping to make petrol bombs, which is uh, an activity I don't think any librarian ever wanted to be involved in. Um, but I, I guess uh, from your experience, Liz, just in terms of how you work with, with libraries, have you seen that kind of adaptability coming through the, the library staff? Yes, I, I was going to add as well. I think um, that is a, a big change and again, just shows how phenomenal librarians are really. And certainly in the, the COVID pandemic, I think that, you know, libraries doing click and collect almost or being able to deliver li uh, library books to people that couldn't get out not that many of us could but certainly some of the work we've done recently has been um supporting um afghan refugees who have been housed in, in hotels here in manchester and we've worked closely with them um, some of the library staff to go and deliver workshops 
um, with the children mainly around arts and crafts, but then connecting them in with the library space as well. So that's something, again, like bringing the library outside the physical space. Um, it's quite new, I think, but I hope we don't go back because that has been really, really powerful. Just amazing. And, and, and Lem, as somebody who's, who's worked with and alongside librarians um, through the course of your, your kind of growth as a writer, have, have you seen those changes come through as well? Sorry, which changes are those? I, I've got to say, just let, can I just share something with you? I am just trying to write. <laughs> Excellent. That says it all then, that's okay. fine. But, but, but what, I was, what, what, what I was trying to do was to start to write it in Ukrainian. Uh, so I, I was trying to do it then. I apologize. So I missed you. No, no, it's my fault. I apologize. It's, it's um, really how librarians are adapting to, to this. So we mean something different in people's lives. Yulia and Anastasia are proving this, Liz also, that the truth is, and it always has been, that the librarian is a radical on our high street, okay? The librarian is connected to community, is to the idea that information is power, is what the librarian is doing every day of their lives. So what is happening here in Manchester as well, but, but in extreme degrees in Ukraine, is that that, that um, premise is being tested. Information is power. And there you have the AK-47 on the table of the director of libraries, you know, and there you have her knowing that information is power and that she will uh, make uh, the books get out to people in any way, by any means necessary. Um, so I, I think of librarians, and I always have, as actual radical thinkers, uh, and and a very important symbol of democracy. I'm so delighted to hear. And I'm, I, as somebody who works for the Chartered Institute of Librarians, I'm now going to change it to the Chartered Institute of Radicals on our high street. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely love that. It is the loudest place. You know, people talk about silence. They say, oh, you know, libraries are silent places. They are the loudest place on the high street. Those books are bursting with ideas. They really, really are. And, and I mean, I've been amazed. We've seen some projects around the world where librarians are helping people access information in some of the most locked down regimes. They're helping people to use even online gaming to get access to knowledge that, that librarians will will find a way. And I think it is what unites us in, in Luhansk in Manchester around the world is that belief in the dignity and right of the individual and, and the right to access and share knowledge and information is, is just totally fundamental. I was, I was wondering if we could turn then just briefly to look ahead. And, and I'm thinking, you know, obviously in, in Ukraine, it's a very volatile and uncertain uh, situation. You, you have all of our solidarity and, and support, but wh where do you see the Wandering Library going from here? What, what, what happens next for you? Actually, we don't know. <laughs> uh, we don't know because there are so many uh, different situations. Uh, every single day, we are just so afraid to get uh, in a trap, you know. Um, we have been trying for so long to get out uh, of the trap of traditional rules. Uh, I mean, uh, of the modern librarian. And there were times when uh, it only hurt us because uh, there were uh, many misunderstandings between librarians in Luhansk region. I mean, and uh, now we see the result of this work. Librarians who were afraid and did not change with us uh, are now in the occupied territories in Luhansk region. They have frozen in time and we are afraid uh, we we just uh, we want the same the same situation. And uh, yes, therefore the strange of the library is uh, is in the full sense of what it does and for whom and um, Without understanding, um, there will be no victory over 
oneself, I, I, I think. So I, we'll just continue to work, to work, to work, hard work. That's the, the best thing you, you can do. I mean, I think it's fascinating that we see that debate going on across libraries around the world between the old and the new and, and people being very protective of old ideas about the library, that it is about the place and it's about the building. And, and actually, I think you're right that wherever we look across the world, it's the people that really connect to what a library means and what it does for people in their daily lives. And, and that is ready to let go of old ways of doing things and kind of embrace the new. But, you know, fundamentally, people need us. You know, they, they need libraries, they need places of meaning, they need places of, of connection. And if that means leaving the library to take the library to where they are, then then that's what we have to keep doing. But I, I think your your dedication to that mission is just unbelievable and under the situations you're, you're working in. Yeah. You know. And I, I think similarly, you know, for, for Anastasia, presumably, you know, it's an uncertain future, but staying connected to the core values. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's too hard um, because uh, um, I was, uh, uh, two weeks ago, I was at uh, uh, German and uh, in Congress, and uh, I talk about uh, Ukrainian library and uh, uh, have um, part when I uh, uh, um, show some photos uh, um, and uh, Julia and uh, my director and I crying because uh, it's uh, it's wonderful and strange and uh, dangerous. Um, thinking about uh, my work, uh, my uh, workspace, my my books on my table, and uh, thinking about uh, some events uh, uh, which we make. And um, uh, and I believe, uh, I only fight in, uh, in our victory and uh, our army and, uh, and your support, it's, it's all. Uh, I have only work and my family in occupied territory and my friends, uh, Julia and uh, my team. And uh, I, I think the library is a place we are uh, we uh, change the world, so change your mind, and um, yeah. uh, make something uh, something good, something friendly, F friendly space, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. There's a, a beautiful story. There's there's a library in Latvia in Riga um, called the Mountain of Light, and it's called the Mountain of Light because of a, a very old folk story. Um, that there's a mountain in the heart of Latvia and when the invaders come the people pour their stories and their poems into the mountain and they seal it up and the mountain sinks below the waves and then when the invaders go again the mountain rises up and the people's stories come back and are, are shared with the people again um, and I think there's something incredibly powerful in libraries as not just places of short-term reaction but places of recovery and rebuilding after the conflict and, and I think you know when Ukraine rebuilds in future your libraries are going to be so central uh, to that process it's absolutely vital I, I don't know Liz if you wanted to reflect on that role of libraries in in recovery and renewal definitely and I think I think that's really um, clear when when some of the people we work with have gone on to volunteer in the libraries there's several people I know that are volunteering in the archives in Central Library. They take um, a very active role in some of the community libraries, for example, Longsight. They're telling stories. They're part of these um, opportunities and events that help with the routine, the rebuilding and the forward looking, really, so that there's something in the future to look towards and to, to build towards. So I think, yes, there is that short term response. But like you say, that long term recovery and being that touch point for people, um, definitely. Yeah, and no, I, I completely agree. I, I don't know, Lem, if, if this is a, a thing you have a view on that this idea that we're not just about short term resilience, it's about long term recovery and, and regrowth. Yeah, I'm sorry. I've just I just missed myself there. Um, I apologise, Nick. Um, no, no, no problem. There. And I saw your beautiful poster in Ukrainian as well. Can you hold it up again? Just so we... Yes, that is. <laughs> 
<laughs> Excellent. Is that right? Absolutely. Is that, is that correct? Information is power. Oh, okay. I apologize. Well, how, how do you say information is power? L L. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 I think that was a much more important message to be, be sending. No, it, it was really about the future and about rebuilding. And, and we see this around the world that, that libraries, you know, in some senses in the UK, we've got lots of divisions and polarities going on and we need to heal and rebuild. We've seen communities all over the world and, and it's whether you had a view, Lem, on, on that process of healing and recovery in the library. Um, there are, in this country, I'm sad to say, 800 libraries have uh, disappeared uh, within this present government, um, but also the libraries have disappeared from, you know, uh, right wing uh, councils and, and left, you know, across the political spectrum. We need to save our libraries, this is important, those physical spaces, and specifically I should mention here the Carnegie libraries which were um, given uh, through the philanthropy of Carnegie um, but but the, 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 the property is being taken back uh, against the reason that it was given it was given to the people those libraries so we need to fight for our libraries now um, if you don't mind me saying that this is why uh, Nick and um, Liz the, the, the festival of libraries that you have created here in Manchester and Greater Manchester is very important, very important. So, so fundamental, yeah. it's essential to celebrate. And, and yeah, I mean, it, at the moment, libraries in the UK are being treated as a building, not as their true value to the community. And, and you know, and, and I think we're in a situation where people know the, the price of everything and the value of nothing. And we, we have to, fight to defend that principle. <laughs> Yeah. So it's, it's incredibly important. But I, I love, you know, whenever you bring together the people to talk about libraries around the world, uh, there's always a common purpose, you know, whatever country it is, whether it's Ukraine or, or Manchester or anywhere in the world, there, there's always this shared focus on the needs of the user and the needs of the community yeah. and uh, that idea that information is, is power. So I, I guess then um, we're just coming towards the, the sort of winding up stages of, of this session. And I, I wanted to ask each of you in turn, if I may, just to look at what your biggest hope for the future is. I, I know the future is uncertain, but, but what do you hope for most of all for, for your library? So perhaps if, if Yulia, if I could come to you first of all with that question, what, what's your biggest hope for the future? My, 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 yes, my yeah, yeah. biggest help. Um, for the future, uh, okay, um, my biggest hope for the future of libraries is um, all of them uh, will finally become uh, a place uh, where you can find yourself and uh, help others to do the same. Uh, I hope uh, that the library will win, not stereotypes, not stereotypes, oh please. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I would like to add that um, many hubs and uh, centers of activity in Ukraine unfortunately destroyed, uh, are destroyed. And despite of this, we must continue to communicate, uh, offer uh, solutions, hear each other, and uh, we really need a place for that. And uh, this means that, uh, in my opinion, <laughs> this means that libraries have the great uh, potential to meet this. I, I absolutely perfectly put, and, and we are going to need places of reconciliation and healing and, and libraries are ideal. But I, I think there's something so powerful in what you say about not allowing the old stereotypes to, to come back again. You know, we, we've learnt that a library can be different and we've got to take that new knowledge forward. So thank you so much, Yulia. Anastasia, could I perhaps ask you this, the same question? What, what's your biggest hope? My biggest hope uh, that uh, we make uh, library revolution, uh, we make uh, a modern library, uh, it's, uh, on, on my opinion, it's open space uh, with so many books uh, and uh, people and um, there, uh, they are creative something and maybe uh, library uh, in the future have um, 
non-conversation activities um, like volunteering, uh, like um, preparing some maybe foods or uh, talking about uh, global uh, problems. It's um, it's a good network uh, for me. I think it's um, it's good way and to step by step go for for those uh, library. Absolutely love that idea and, and thank you so much. We um, about two years ago held a competition for children to build the library of the future out of Lego uh, and uh, it was an amazing, we, we got hundreds of responses but there were gardens and swimming pools and robots and slides and conversations and quiet corners and computers and everything you could possibly imagine and, and I love you know, that that's the library of the future we want to build is that beautiful, creative, diverse uh, and meaningful space. Uh, I think that's wonderful. Thank you, Anastasia. Uh, Liz, can I perhaps come to you about possibly for libraries and for your work? What, what's your biggest hope? Yeah, I think it's the idea that people continue to recognise the value of libraries and to keep, you know, working towards that. And, and also just to really just for us to remember the power that we have as regular people I mean you, you mentioned at the beginning sort of off off um before we started about what's happened with Rwanda and stopping those flights that were due to happen yesterday that power of collaboration and people coming together often gets undermined and we forget that we actually have some power because we're told that we don't but when we look up and we look around at what people are doing and what people care about it's it's having the confidence to come together as a collective and work towards something good and something powerful and positive and being brave enough to do that I think I just could not agree more the people the people have the power uh, I think libraries made us powerful libraries make us free and we forget that sometimes you know in the dark days of the media and, and political behaviors we we forget that this is all about us and coming together and I think the library as a platform, I, I'd love to see people rediscovering the library as a place of activism and mm -hmm. community action. Uh, I think that's so exciting. And just, you know, the work you're doing is extraordinary as, as Manchester City of Sanctuary. And, and I'd really love to see the Library of Sanctuary movement grow across the UK. So thank you so much. Uh, Lem, could I perhaps come to you for the, the final word on your hopes for the future of libraries? But just to talk about Manchester City of Library, City, the libraries here in Manchester. In the central library where I am now, there are posters uh, of the 1980s Viraj Mendis defence campaign. Viraj Mendis was a, a refugee. Uh, the police were trying to get him. Uh, we, we, uh, we looked after him. Uh, uh, he had sanctuary and a church here. Uh, it was a national news story. Uh, it was in the libraries that we campaigned for him. Okay, that's where those events happened. In the local, in Hume Library, in Mossside Library, and right here in Central Library. Okay, so that was the hub of community action. That's the first thing I wanted to say. Second thing I wanted to say is, please, anybody who is watching this, uh, uh, take a screenshot, okay? Take a screenshot and hashtag Ukraine libraries, the good library, hashtag the good library, uh, hashtag um, uh, uh, festival of libraries, hashtag, but hashtag Ukraine libraries so that people out there start to see. And the final thing I say, which is connected to that actually, is what we've said earlier, that information is power. And that makes uh, libraries as radical places of change and growth. Um, right now, people are selling information. Okay, the, the internet, they've started to realize how valuable information is. It's more valuable than oil data, okay? All right, let me share this. Libraries knew that way before the internet came. They knew that and they worked towards that goal for sharing information, not for money, for free. So no wonder people want to shut down libraries. You know, they are the active radicals on our high streets. Um, and so, yeah, we need to support that. 
unbelievable. Thank you. Oh, so, oh sorry, Harry. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> Nick, I just want to say one more thing, and it, it is about activism. Libraries in schools here in the United Kingdom. Okay, libraries in universities. Are, libraries are the bedrock of all universities, <laughs> the bedrock of all learning. Libraries in schools and in primary schools uh, help uh, raise the attainment uh, uh, goals. But, so why are they taking them? You know, why are libraries being closed down in schools here in England? Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to say that. Um, no, I, incredibly important yeah. message, Lemon. I, I appreciate it. You're nearly twice as likely to have access to a library um, in an independent fee paying school in the UK as you are in a state funded school with a high proportion of free school meals. This is an equalities and human rights issue and I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I'm afraid we're at the top of our, our time. Len, there'll be an opportunity to hear from you tomorrow, I think, as part of the yes. Festival of Libraries. Yeah. Fantastic. Everybody do go and, and look at the website, which is manchestercityofliterature.com and you'll be able to find uh, Lem's talk uh, tomorrow. But just to our, our Ukrainian colleagues you know it's, yes. I, I hope you know that you aren't just fighting the battle for yourselves you're fighting it for all of us uh, we are all connected as librarians and, and people of information and we stand with you so thank you so much uh, to all of our panelists for taking the time to be with us particularly to our colleagues uh, in the Ukraine to Liz yes. thank you to Lem thank you so much and to everybody who joined us here today and with that we'll bring this session to a close thank you so much everyone